Hi, I'm Melissa Bantug in the Johns Hopkins Breast Cancer Survivorship Program. Today we're joined by Dr. Barrett Stearns. She's going to talk to us about the importance of clinical trials. Dr. Stearns, it's great to have you here. Thank you for having me today. Can you tell me why clinical trials are important for breast cancer patients? Sure. The first thing I tell uh, every one of my patients is that today's treatments are yesterday's clinical trials. So by uh, either participating or hearing more about clinical trials, we'll be more informed about what the future may bring. Can you talk a little bit about how clinical trials shape our practices? Sure. So um, I think the first thing to, to realize is that not every clinical trial is the same as the other. I think when most people think of clinical trials, they think of studies when they might get uh, treatment versus no treatment, mm -hmm. which is actually not what most of the clinical trials are. Studies may start by investigating something new um, in a certain population of patients, and then when there are good signals that it may be working against a specific uh, cancer or disease, in this case breast cancer, then they might be compared to standard treatment. So it could be that a uh, patient will be randomized to drug A versus drug B or combination A versus B, or maybe a combination versus the combination plus something uh, different. So uh, every trial is uh, maybe different and not every trial is proper for every person. So for a clinical trial, a patient wouldn't necessarily receive no treatment versus one treatment. It would be the standard care versus the investigational drug, is that right? That's correct. Uh, most clinical trials will compare uh, an existing treatment to a new one, or uh, if someone has been through multiple treatments and the thought is there's no uh, standard treatment available, then uh, there could be a phase one or a phase two type study Phase one is a study when uh, we investigate usually either a novel drug or agent uh, or a combination. It could be something that we know works mm -hmm. uh, and adding something new to it to evaluate the side effects and get a hint of how we might be effective. And a phase two study is a study where uh, we put uh, a set number of participants to see what the response rate, meaning cancer shrinkage or uh, living long term without cancer might be. And what about a stage three or stage four clinical trial? Can you talk a little bit about that? Right. So a phase three clinical trial is what we call a more definitive clinical mm -hmm. trial. This is when you have enough information to suggest that the treatment in, under investigation could be better than mm -hmm. the existing treatment. Now, uh, in reality, sometimes it's not better or it's the same. So the study is designed properly to answer this question. I, are we looking for something that's better than the existing treatment? Or are we looking for something that may be the same in, in terms of effectiveness but may have fewer side effects? Or are we looking to actually take back uh, some of the treatment? Just as an example, chemotherapy for early breast cancer in the very beginning, uh, almost uh, uh, 30 years ago, investigated combination of drugs given over a two-year period. Mm -hmm. And over the years, we've actually shortened the duration of uh, chemotherapy to three to six months. So sometimes we do try to shorten the, the, the duration of treatment as well. And a stage four clinical trial would be? So uh, uh, studies after the FDA has approved uh, a drug for a certain indication, for example, let's say um, in breast cancer, sometimes they ask the uh, industry partners to go ahead and do additional studies to investigate specific questions. For example, uh, let's say a medication is approved for the treatment of breast cancer, but they want to know more about its safety to the heart or to the bones, et cetera, and they might say, we want you to enroll additional patients uh, to provide additional information to the community, yet because they feel that the benefits are so great, they approve the drug and it can be used clinically. And what about regulatory or ethical practices to ensure a patient's safety? Do those exist? Uh, clinical trials undergo many reviews by um, both local institutions, uh, but also most will undergo review by the National Cancer Institute and many other regulatory committees. So for example, the one type of study we discussed, the phase three trial, uh, most phase three studies will be either run by pharmaceutical companies or by National Cancer Institute affiliated cooperative groups. And what that means is that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, had to sign in in advance regarding the design, the number of patients who will be participating. Uh, same thing with the National Cancer Institute. And then every hospital that's participating in the study will have their local uh, institutional review board, or IRB, uh, look and evaluate the studies. There's also scientific reviews. Uh, which 
all of those reviews uh, are done not by uh, science uh, liaisons and physicians, but also by community advocates. So there's quite a bit of input into the design before a study is even initiated. And so if a patient wanted to participate or was interested in participating in a clinical trial, what mm -hmm. would you recommend to find out more? Um, my first recommendation is for the patient to talk to um, his or her doctor mm -hmm. uh, because I feel that the physician usually knows what may be uh, most appropriate for that person. They'll know the stage of the disease, what is the standard approach, and then what could be available either in the local community or if it's a very unique type of cancer or rare uh, situation, then uh, that physician many times can reach to others nationally or even internationally to find the right study for the patients. I would definitely start by talking to the doctor, but I do realize that sometimes uh, people do find it a little bit hard to, to discuss or may want to do some investigation on their own, and there are definitely options of doing that. The main website that I'd recommend um, is uh, clinicaltrials.gov, mm -hmm. so one word clinical trials. Gov, and this is uh, a website that's run by the National Cancer Institute and I think it's very easy to use. I use it myself often. Um, it asks you for the type of cancer, if you know stage, and you can put in um, a, a mileage area that you would be, would, would be willing to consider. For example, tell me about every uh, breast cancer related trial for a stage 4 breast cancer within 100 mile radius mm -hmm. from my home or 300 mile etc. Mm -hmm. uh, so you can start small, you can enlarge the um, the area that you, you'd be willing to be considered and then they'll uh, the site will list the potential trials, you can look through those and their phone numbers and names of investigators that you can reach and then uh, basically every site will have either a clinical um, coordinator or a research nurse that will be picking up the phone or an email mm -hmm. and will be able to tell you whether um, you're appropriate for a specific clinical trial or not or also guide you elsewhere. And are resources like that pretty frequently updated so you can go back and check if you're not currently eligible that at some point you might be eligible for something else? Yeah, so the resources are available and updated on a regular basis. So as soon as the study is initiated, it will be listed as such. If it's closed, meaning it met its accrual mm -hmm. goals or there are issues with it, it will say that it's been terminated. I think with clinical trials we talk a lot about drugs and, and different treatments, but are there other quality of life clinical trials that are available for patients throughout care, so not just at the beginning of treatment? Absolutely. So there are clinical trials to just about uh, every part of the spectrum of breast cancer, and I personally think of breast cancer as a spectrum for evaluating risk of an individual mm -hmm. to prevention and then to treatment and survivorship. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is practically clinical trials in every one of those categories. Um, and fortunately, most women with breast cancer will survive their disease long term, but many would have gone through treatment, surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, or hormonal therapy, and there may be um, short-term and long-term side effects. So it's going to be more important for us to learn a little bit about who's likely to develop side effects and what kind of intervention uh, can be administered. So there are many studies looking at uh, um, how women um, um, cope with treatment and following treatment, how do they transition to survivorship, what are some of the issues we deal with, and also investigating approaches to uh, improve their quality of life. Great. Well, Dr. Schrenz, this is so helpful. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.